It is Tri-City Sports Now, and I'm Marky e. Bilson. Ellen Nordegren, Tiger Woods, fact on Yahoo. There you go. I just amazing what one Masters will do for you, you know, that sort of thing. All right. Uh, we, as I said, one o'clock. Going to talk to Chris McCoskey, Detroit News. He is going to discuss with me Daniel Norris, who may or may not be in the Detroit Tigers pitching rotation. Wrote a story on him. They skipped over his start when Friday's game got snowed out to in Johnson City, Tennessee, regarding ETSU. One in softball because I think that it was a little more pressing. University of Tennessee came to Betty Basler Field and the Lady Vols defeated the ETSU Buccaneers by the score of 11 to nothing. In fact, they slaughter ruled them. All right, but that's not really the issue here. What is the issue is that 11 to nothing game had two grand slams from the same player, a uh, regular, what, Tony uh, Cloninger? And a no-hitter. Gee, even when Rick Wise hit two home runs in his no-hitter, he didn't, yeah, hit him with the bases loaded. Then again, we're talking about two different players here, but that's quite the historic day. Anyway, the, uh, the the hitter of note, and it's a native Tennessean, left-handed hitter, uh, was named Bearden, and the no-hitter, let's see here, uh, she was the first player in Vols history since Lauren Gibson to hit two grand slams in a game. Is that correct here? What are you getting right here? I'm going to get Bearden and the grand slams. Forgive me here, because I know that... I got the, the same thing. You'd think that I uh, would learn by now. However, uh, my printout says, okay, here's the player, Marky, and it's Haley Bearden, by the way. Eight RBIs, regular Jason Bay. But that's not the entire story. Like I said, two grand slams, that's impressive enough. delivered the fifth combined no-hitter in UT history. Now, the amazing thing is that the Lady Vols only got three hits in the entire game, an 11-0 victory. Two of them, the Bearden Grand Salamis. Haley Bearden, by the way. Uh, but yeah, it's a non-conference game, so they're playing to win. They're playing for the conference games. They're playing for the number eight ranking and a potential national championship, not necessarily individual glory against ETSU. There's some ETSU fans that are grumbling. Yeah, softball team always seems to come up short. Betty Basler Field did nothing for them in terms of competitiveness. May have helped uh, the Buccaneers get... The Southern Conference did not. Softball, really the only sport that the A-Sun consistently is better than the SoCon, or at least they were a decade before, then, you know, that's where they put their emphasis in. You know, tennis coach likes them. 
course, now ETSU kind of spends. They pay Steve Forbes as much as any mid-major coach you're going to find, which will keep away all the other mid-major programs, like, well, even a UTEP from hiring him. A job he could have had. Anyway, this is where we're at. Combined no-hitter with Rodgers and Myers and Bearden with two grand slams. day. It also speaks of the area as a sports town. However, you fall 59-3. You fall 11 nothing with a player, Haley Bearden, hitting grand slams and two pitchers combining for a no-hitter. And you see your president interview for that school's chancellorship I say it before, some schools in the Southern Conference are in the shadow of the programs in the ACC and the SEC that surround them. ETSU is subservient, like it or not. And until they really declare, how will they do that? I was actually calling out a Rick Barnes for not wanting to play in Johnson City. How about and tries to break the record for the largest crowd. Maybe it's Virginia Tech they bring in. Maybe it's Notre Dame. Maybe it's Alabama. Hmm. That would really be a shot over the deck, wouldn't it? Think about it. Regardless, ETSU falling in softball. However, uh, in other sports, the Southern Conference, very little attention because, and I'll talk about this a little bit later on in Media Watch, there was no reporter sent out for the Johnson City Press. Ah, yes, the subservience. UT comes to town. ETSU is playing Appalachian State at the same time. Really? Think about this. Baseball, yes, a much more popular, revenue-generating sport than softball, participation, all of that. Yet because it was the Lady Vols in town, that's what got the reporter in the paper. I'll talk a little bit more about that in Media Watch. Regardless, ETSU did pick up its second shutout victory of the year last night, 4 nothing against Appalachian State. Five freshman pitchers, well, for Joe Panucci this year. Uh, Colby Stewart goes to just two and two. He gets the victory and with a five-inning tilt. Meanwhile, Sean Kearney gets a couple of hits. There you go. Couple of, it was a big day in Johnson City, a couple of big games, a couple of uh, rivalry of baseball. There you go, yeah. It was a real rivalry day yesterday. What, you know, Coy County? big rivalry. I, you know, if it's Science Hill Elizabeth, then I might, you know. In fact, there is some uh, consideration that Science Hill Elizabeth then is now bigger than Science Hill DB, but, you know, winning the Masters. But for me, the Lightning in four games, that's a far, far, far bigger upset. Don't bet against greatness. And you know what? Greatness lost in the NHL playoffs with the Lightning falling to the Blue Jackets. Columbus had never, ever, ever won a playoff series. Now they just beat a record-setting team. 
with a record-setting center who scores more points than any other NHL player down all year long. They have the star power. However, uh, Islanders have Barry Trotz. He won a Stanley Cup last year in Washington. How the Capitals didn't retain him, look, I didn't get it at the time, and I certainly don't get it now. Could it be Washington and the Islanders, uh, Barry Trotz seeking revenge? Hmm. Of course, we'll talk more hockey with Alex Doherty of On the Forecheck coming, or I said On the Forecheck. I keep making that. It's A to Z Sports. Get Kelly Harper tentatively scheduled tomorrow to be on the program of the, yes, they defeat ETSU in emphatic fashion. And so now they want to uh, talk to us. Tri-City Sports Now, we're going to return. I will talk actually a little more about the NHL playoffs. We'll have some highlights.